Jenna Barbosa. <laughs> and huh? help me welcome her to the stage. Check, check. Beautiful. Let me just tell you. I just want to take you all in for a second. Beautiful girls. Let me just tell you what. I am mad. I am mad at the enemy. You know why? Sitting there watching you guys, you could barely make eye contact with yourself. But you could if you were degrading yourself. Right? Can I be honest with you? This message... I'm like going to be at the level with you. I'm going to be real honest about some stuff. I don't have it all together just because I'm up here. None of us have it all together, right? Today, on my way in, I had to run. I had to do some work um, where I work, and I had to run to the bank. So I'm walking into the bank, and I didn't have this thing on, right, that hides kind of all my fluff. And I'm walking, and I see, and I went in just like tankless, or tank shop, and I walked by <laughs> tankless. Oh yeah, I was, you know, sporting. Um, but the mirror, of course, the whole building is a mirror. Don't you love those? And so I'm walking past, and I was like, oh, gag. And I was like, Jenna, what was that? How many of you guys have done that? Every day. Every day. How many of you guys are pros at making eye contact in the mirror when you are downgrading yourself? Man, can I challenge you? Can I just challenge you? Redefine what beauty is. The reason why you can't look in the mirror and say you're beautiful is because it's defined by something that you believe you don't have. You are beautiful simply because you're you. Simply because God created you. So as I go into this message and we kind of really talk, to, talk about just a bunch of stuff, how many of you guys are kind of nervous? I heard a couple of people say, like, I'm nervous about the sex talk. <laughs> so we're not talking, this is not a sex talk. What I'm talking to you guys about tonight is purity. But I know the enemy. I know the enemy. And ladies, when you start learning to fight for yourself and for your sisters, you learn the enemy. He's not intelligent. He's strategic. He will absolutely know where to get you every single time. And so I know, and I have been praying you guys up, that as soon as I start digging into this message, he is going to just throw heaping piles of shame on you. If you have done anything that you think, oh, I can't tell anybody about that, or I messed up in this area, or I messed up in that area, or somebody did something to me, I can't tell anybody that. You're carrying around this weight, and I guarantee you Satan is going to throw some more on. So I am asking you right now to just scream in the enemy's face. I'm kind of one of those like movies that they're like, take that moments, right? I'm like, yes, right? So that's totally me. So whenever we get those moments with the enemy, I'm like, yes, right? We got to get ugly with the enemy, don't we? Because when we stand on truth, there's power in that. Ladies, every single one of you have power here tonight. So I want you to scream at the top of your lungs, I am beautiful. And you're not going to scream it to yourself or to everybody else. You're going to scream it in the enemy's face on the count of three. I don't want to have to do it again. One, two, three. Now we're going to take back, <laughs> we're going to take back what the enemy stole back there. The ones that looked in the mirror and lied to yourself, we're taking that back. The enemy doesn't get that tonight. Not for my baby sisters. Not today, Satan. Not today, Satan. All right, so who's wanting to get in here? Okay, so... I am normally not one that like does notes. I mean, I'm like, just give me a couple bullets, tell me what I'm going to talk about, and let's just go to town. So, but I wanted to be very, um, very respectful of you and be careful and be meticulous in what I share with you tonight. 
So I wrote it down into some notes. You all right, Soph? <laughs> so I'm going to follow more of my notes because I want you to get it. Does that make sense? And I'm going to do a ton of visual, visual illustrations. I love that, right? I'm a visual learner, so you show me what you're telling me and you tell me what you're showing me, I'm good. I get it, right? All right, so I want to share with you guys this story. Can I be really honest with you guys? You know what? I don't like to be up here. I'm just going to come down here. I'm going to be really honest with you guys. Here's the story. There he was in bed with a man. He told me he had a list of women he'd chosen to have sex with. And do you know that because I was clouded in my thinking and I had connected sex with him as being chosen, oh, I'm chosen, you mean? You would have sex with me? Like I would be on that list? In a weird way, I wanted to be on the list. You see, at that point, ladies, I had already negotiated the value of my body with men. Purity is a state of mind. Purity is something that virginity is one part of. So at that time, when I had already kind of done everything but, I had compromised so much of my purity that it was real easy to get rid of my virginity. And I didn't even see it as getting rid of it. Because for so long, I was like, well, just stay a virgin, as long as you're just a virgin, right? How many of you guys have grown up in church or are in church or in the culture and you've heard, like, just, man, hold on to your virginity? How many of you heard that? Like, just don't have sex. How many of you have heard that? How many of you guys think that purity and virginity are the same thing? That's good. Because they're two very different things. Virginity is one part of purity. And so if you compromise your purity, when it comes to the place where you're going to lose your virginity, it's so much easier to do so. Because if you are just holding on to the virginity, you're losing sight of purity. Then once you've lost virginity, it's like, well, what's the point? I've already lost it right? Why even try? Like, I'm already on the other side. I'm no longer pure. So why not just keep going? If virginity is the thing that you're focusing on, you'll lose the mark. You'll, you'll lose sight and you'll miss the mark on purity. Now, do not hear me say virginity is nothing. Like, virginity is something that is a gift that you're able to give your husband if you get married. So I'm not downplaying virginity at all, right? And can I tell you, those of you who are not virgins, like myself, you still have a beautiful gift to give your husband. If the Lord blesses me with a husband, I'm able to give him a second virginity, one that I have recommitted to him and to God and valued as a part of my purity walk. Does that make sense? All right, so purity, it is more than just virginity, ladies. So how do we remain pure? Psalm 119, 119.9. How do we remain pure? Since purity is not just one point in time, it's a constant thing we have to keep doing. We have to keep being pure, right? So how do we remain pure? How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. Replace man with your name. Replace young man with your name. How can Jenna keep her way pure? By guarding it according to God's word. And I've walked that journey. I've had to guard my path of purity. And I'm going to share a little bit more along the way. So what does it even mean to be pure? <clears throat> the Hebrew word zakah, means to be clear, clean, or pure. Be bright like a fire. How many of you guys want to burn as something where people see you as different and unique? 
and like set apart. But so many times we end up burning with the desire to be seen in another way. Like I wanted to be on that list, right? So I want you to take note of two words, clean and clear. Being clear-minded is what allows us to have a clean path of purity. Being clear-minded allows us to have a clean path of purity. A lot of the times you guys hear the verse, I'm not giving you a spirit of fear, but of what? Power, love, sound mind. It's a clear mind. Confusion, we talked about confusion in one of the messages. And clouded thinking will clutter our path of purity with soul ties, and so much more that comes with it. Confusion and clouded thinking will absolutely clutter that path of purity we're trying to walk. What did we identify as confusion? Who's that from? The enemy. enemy. So if we remain in a state of confusion, we remain in a cluttered path of purity, and things happen easily, just like when I got to the point of losing my virginity, It was a cluttered path already. You see that? So it's more than just not having sex or staying a virgin, ladies. You have to guard your path of purity with God's word. Ladies, we all have a path of purity to walk. Every single woman in this room, whether you are a virgin, whether you are not a virgin, whether you are married, whether you are single, God calls us all to be pure clear-minded, clean according to God's word, and on guard, right? So what does God say about how to guard our path? So our study is basically going to be in 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 through 7. So I'm going to take, let you guys get there. 1 Thessalonians, <clears throat> it is in the New Testament, and it is after Timothy, Thessalonians, Hebrews, First Corinthians, it's like right after, I think, Timothy. First and second Timothy. First and second Thessalonians. First and second Thessalonians. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what God says about how to guard our path. Everybody can see me okay, right? Yeah. All right. It is God's will that you should be sanctified take note of that word, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God, and that in this matter no one should wrong or take advantage of a brother or sister. The Lord will punish all those who commit such sins, as we told you and warned you before, for God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. So we're going to kind of pull apart some words in there, and we're going to talk first about God's will and how it says that we are to be sanctified. The big question, the big question I want you guys to look at, how many of you guys think, what's God's will for my life? How many of you have thought that? If that's a real struggle for you, and you're seeking the answer to that, in other people or things, you're leaving the door wide open to feel insecure, to feel not good enough, that you don't measure up, you're going to compare. It's going to be a never-ending battle to figure out what God's will is, but not from God, but around you. And what happens is when we feel insecure, not good enough, all of those things because we're struggling with like, what's my purpose in life and, and what's God's will for my life. What happens is we're left open to our identity and our worth is attacked. And Satan, strategic Satan, remember, he sneaks in there and he turns our head towards sexual immorality and says, you can find security there. You can find worth there. You can be somebody different there especially if you have attached your worth to how your life plays out in the romantic arena. Do you see that? Do you see that connection? 
So if you're seeking God's will for your life and your purpose as a human in everything else but God, you're leaving yourself open for attack. And sexual immorality, anything that falls into that is going to be way more tempting, especially if you've attached the two, right? So what does it even mean to be sanctified? So hagiosmos is the Greek word for sanctification, and it means the process of making or becoming holy set apart. Holy set apart. Chosen. Set apart for special purposes. God says, girls, my sweet girls, I have set you apart for some pretty amazing things. But it's on the path of purity. Not just sexual purity, but spiritual purity. And everything when you are positioned to follow God, there's so much fun there. There's hard stuff there because we're still on this side of heaven. So I'm not going to give you a, um, a skewed picture of what following God really looks like. It's hard. And just like Megan talked about, there's still a bunch of storms. But the blessings and the favor and the fun and the intimacy that we have with the Lord is so much more because God has said, I've set you apart for special purposes. And part of those purposes is me is giving you the fullness of me because I love you and created you, right? So what happens, though, when we go along with what culture or a romantic partner says is okay, we're not choosing to be set apart, but just merely one of the crowd, right? How many of you guys want to be one of the crowd? It's okay to raise your hand, absolutely. And that could be some other issues that we have to where we're feeling insecure or we want to kind of remain hidden and not stand out. But when it comes to like big purpose in your life and, and what you want to do with your life, how many of you want to be set apart and be unique in doing something that is unique to your gifting and your skills and you? I do. So when I was trying to be on the list with that guy, I thought I was being chosen, right? But at the end of the day, I wasn't chosen. I wasn't set apart for any special purposes with that guy. And in fact, my identity was attacked because I was no longer Jenna, I was a number. What was I, number five? Was I number 12? Was I number 25? If this guy had a list, was I 50? I didn't know. But because Satan had attacked my identity in the compromising of my purity before that, I was deceived in thinking that I would be chosen. And we all have those moments, girls. Yours might not be a list moment, but it might be a, oh, if I just can get this relationship, if I can just get this guy to look at me or this guy to like me, and it's all about the guy, and maybe I can make the cut instead of like the cheerleader that he's been talking to or the, you know, the, the band girl that he's been talking to or the whoever, right? How many of you all have kind of thought those things? Let's be honest. I'm being honest with you. Oh, man, I want you to be honest with me too. That's where we like really bond is in honesty. So I know I've had those thoughts. I'm like, man, if I could just like make the cut over that girl, right? Funny story, side note, Megan is back there. When I was growing up, her older sister married the love of my life. <laughs> right? And I was always like, man, Rebecca. I was always like, man, if I could just beat Rebecca, then Chris would love me. <laughs> right? Megan and I have laughed about this before, but <laughs> and I'm friends with Rebecca and Chris, that's fine. But I'm just saying when I was when I was younger, it was it was the competition. It was my worth was set in Making the cut, being chosen, but that was in the wrong hands. Because say Chris did choose me. Would that really have changed who I am? No. Would that really have changed who I am? We think that, don't we? Don't you guys think that? I will be better if so-and-so loves me. I will be better if I win over that girl. How many of you guys have thought that? Can I give you another secret? I still think that, 35 years old, 
and I have to go, whoa, Jenna, what was that? Get it back together. Put your, put your face toward truth. So culture will point us in so many directions as to tell us what's okay in the sexual realm, in the relationship realm. And that's often what we put ourselves up against and say, like, am I in line with like all the cool people I'm seeing on social media or all the cool things I'm seeing on Snapchat or Instagram or, you know, TV shows? Like, am I in line with what culture is saying is approved and cool and okay? How many of you guys have thought that? Like, well, man, this so-and-so has this, 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 and that. They have this relationship. Oh, they are just so in love, the bachelorette, right? <laughs> Can I say that again? <laughs> it is, it's an onslaught of the enemy saying, see, you don't have that. See, let me just connect this and let me go and get your worth and tie them together. See, you're not really worth that much because you don't have that. Hmm. So, let's look at what culture says is okay. Pornography. In video, we see it all over TV. Yeah, we'll keep this one up. Books, if you're reading saucy love novels. That's pornography. <laughs> Fan fiction, yep. <laughs> Sophie, no. <laughs> Um, I'm just kidding. I just learned about that. Like, there's so, and that's, I'm glad you actually said that, Sophie, because things are constantly popping up. Again, the enemy is strategic. If he sees, oh, I have a hold on these girls' hearts with the sexual stuff, do you think he's going to kick his feet back and be like, no, we're good? No. No. He's going to absolutely throw fire, throw coals on that fire and say, let's figure out what other perversion we can do, what next we can do. Because here's a hint, ladies. Any type of sexual addiction is progressive, meaning it starts here, it goes here. It does not start here and go here. Your control and the intensity of it can absolutely go here. But the addiction aspect is progressive. That means you have to have more perverted, different, more of to get the same level of feel good. Are you ready to sign up for just a whole dump truck load of perversion? Because that's what you're doing. You're saying, Satan, park it in my driveway and I'll just take off. I'll just piece off of it every day. If that's where my worth is in, I'll just keep piecing off of it. And it's a constant flow. So pornography, fan fiction, those stuff, that stuff, masturbation, sexual play, anything but intercourse, the whole, we did everything but, right? Actual intercourse, actual having sex. Sexual domination and control, can I say Fifty Shades of Grey? Book and movie, yeah. Sophie. Sorry. <laughs> got the peanut gallery <laughs> in the front. No, <clears throat> but Fifty Shades of Grey, we've got this new form of sexual out there in the public. That stuff was behind the closed doors in pornography. But through Fifty Shades of Grey, now it's cool. And can I tell you, before I swore off dating apps, I literally would have guys asking me to be like, to play into that and, and to be a part of that. Sexual experimentation with the same and or other gender. Ladies, we live in a society where homosexuality is rampant. So sexuality, sexual play comes into that as well. The amount of partners in the relationship, the throuples, right? The polyamorous, oh, we're just polyamorous. Will you be on the dating apps again? Oh, we're a married couple. We're looking for to add to an another addition. I'm like, mm, bye-bye. 
right? Is that chosen? But, but if my path of purity was cluttered and I had clouded thinking, I could be like, ooh, this married couple wants me. I could be chosen. Do you see how it gets t- totally warped? Can I get a strong nod on that? I want to see if you guys see that warp that Satan does. Good. And then sexting and sharing nude pictures. Guys, that is so rampant. And it shows up on social media. How many people, how many young teens have committed suicide because somebody had a nude picture that they posted on social media and it ruined their life? Can I just lovingly tell you, when you send stuff like that, we, we're deceived in thinking that we can trust this other person to protect that? If I said, hey, so-and-so, I don't really know you all that well, but would you send me something so sacred and intimate? Just, just let me in. Just, just give it to me. Would you trust me? But you do with the guys or the girls. It is something that is so rampant. And I want to just take a breath for a second. <sighs> because I, the last thing I want to do is have a tone that is speaking to, like, at you or down to you. If you have played around in any of these things, if you are struggling with any of these things, I am believing, like, believing that chains will be broken tonight. That you will have the courage to talk to one of us and say, help me. Because here's the truth, ladies. We don't get into it by ourselves. Society helps us. And we won't get out of it by ourselves. And sweet little sisters, it is harder to get out than it is to get in. Because you're going upstream. You're going against the current. That is why you need your sisters. You need friends. You need truth to be able to pull you out absolutely need that so I want to show you this here's my little first visual all right they are yes they are balls all right they're playing balls. We'll just get that silliness out of the way. Okay. All right, listen up. I need your attention. Okay. We're going to have these four bags represent pornography, intercourse, sexting and sharing pictures, and then just all the sexual play. Okay? What happens is these things kind of clutter up our path. Pretend this is our path of purity. They clutter it up. Can I walk confidently through this? If my eyes are wide open, I can. But are we ever wide open when we're in sexual immorality? So because Satan is so, so, so against you, He says, here's a whole heaping of shame to go right along with this. I'm going to throw it right on into your path. That one was a little heavier, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you heard the thump of that, didn't you? (laughs) Guys, shame carries a deep, deep weight, doesn't it? I cannot wait to teach you guys about shame tomorrow. Shame carries a weight. So what happens is because pornography never stays tightly, neatly up into one place. You can't just keep it in your bedroom, can you? You can't just keep it in your car, wherever you're looking at it. So what happens 
is because God is a good God and says, I'm not going to let you just stay in this. <clears throat> and because the consequences of sin don't just affect you, they go everywhere. So what's that sexual play? What was this one? What do we have bags for, guys? Here's intercourse. Oh, man, these things are going out of control. Woo! What was this one? Sexting. And what was this one? What? Yep. Oh, Fifty Shades of Grey right here. Christian. I can't stand his name either. All right. We have one hiding. It always finds its way into the light, doesn't it, girls? All right. Now, can I walk? Can I walk? Somebody comes along and says, hey, what are you doing in your life? Why, why are you upset? Oh, I don't want you to know about my porn. Oh gosh, where is it? Uh, wait, was this my porn? Oh, dang it. Oh, oh, oh that's shame. I don't want that one. Uh, what the heck? I can't control it. But guess what, ladies? Satan wants you to believe you can. That's what we believe when we dive in. I can control this. I can keep it under tight wraps. When we're done... There's enough balls here for each of you to take one home. I want you to grab it and remember what they stand for. And I'm just going to kind of boldly call this out. We're laughing about the word balls. Satan, even in this message, is clouding thoughts. I want you to willfully and choose right now to reassociate balls with a walk of purity. Do you get that? Take back, ladies. Fight back. Okay. Let's talk about porn. Next slide, please. All right. So it comes from the word porneia which means fornication, whoredom, talks about being idolaters. This is a root word for our word pornography. I'm talking about pornography. Go ahead, Janice. Porn is associated with what? Yell them out with me. Anxiety, body image issues, poor self-image. Next one, Janice. Those who consume porn feel less less attraction to their partners. They feel less love as well. Ladies, porn is never just porn. Yeah, babe. I spelled what wrong? They. Where? To their partners, those who consume porn feel less attracted to their partners. The oh, the feel. Nah, okay. Well, the feel. The feel is less love. <laughs> I saved it. No, I'm kidding. It's fine. So let's look at porn a little bit more and how it just really affects our culture, shall we? So here are some statistics that I want you guys to really look at. Porn is a global. It's it's worldwide. And it's an estimated $97 billion industry. It is a money-making machine. Do money-making machines care about your well-being? No. Do they care about how it's going to affect your heart and soul? No. Nope. $12 billion of that comes from the U.S. 64% of young people ages 13 through 24, you're in that age group, 
actively seek out pornography weekly or more often. So here's what we're going to do. I want you to count off 1 through 10. Okay. If your numbers one through six stand up. Okay, ladies, this six out of ten women your age group actively seek out pornography weekly, if not more. This would be representative of how many people in the room would have a porn struggle. Not saying you guys do that are standing up, let me just clearly <laughs> say that. But it's a representation of six out of ten people. Y'all can sit down. Now, if you had numbers eight or seven through ten, stand up. It's a lot less of you, isn't it? Now, when peer pressure comes in, how easy is it for you guys to not give in to pornography? or to come out of it when you in the room are the minority. Do you guys see that? It's a real struggle. And guys, girls, girls struggle with it just as much as guys do, if not more. It is a woman's issue as much as it is a man's issue. You guys can sit down. Teenage girls are significantly more likely to actively seek out porn than women 25 years old and above. So ladies, if you're 25 and under, you're more, you're more likely to seek out porn than those older than 25. Do you know why? Like, do you ever wonder why that is? Why it's such a, a teen struggle? In psychology, there's something that's called Erickson's stage of development. And the age is 12 to 18 is called the stage of identity versus role confusion. Your age is so desperately seeking out identity and you get confused easily about your role in life and your role in relationships and relationships are the defining event to be able to play this stage of development out. So when you have successfully developed in this stage, what that looks like is you have the ability to stay true to yourself but the failure of developing in this stage of identity versus role confusion leads to role confusion even more and a weak sense of yourself. So ladies, can I ask you, if you're constantly being a chameleon and changing colors for whoever's going to offer a relationship to you, when are you ever going to know yourself enough to be true to yourself? You never give yourself the opportunity to succeed what did I say earlier? It's a progressive issue. You have to keep seeking more, more relationships, a different kind of relationship, to be able to gain that identity. A study of 14 to 19-year-olds found that females who consumed pornographic videos were at significantly greater likelihood of becoming victims of sexual harassment or sexual assault. Do you know why? Because what you see on pornography Satan deceives you in thinking that that's the way it is. But over half of the women in the pornography videos are either drugged or forcefully raped. So you're more likely to be able to have that assault. 
A recent United Kingdom survey found that 44% of males ages 11 through 16 who consume pornography reported that online pornography gave them ideas about what types of sex to try. Can I tell you something? If you are actively sexual, if you're sexually active, and your man, your boy, little boy, men protect you. Boys use you. So if these boys are learning how to use you, hey, let's try this. You have then just become a body to use, not a person to love. So you're inviting that in. The teen porn category has topped porn site searches for the last six years. The most common female role stated in porn titles is that of women in their 20s portraying teenagers. Recorded child sex exploitation, known as child porn, is one of the fastest growing online businesses. Fastest growing. That's like, I can't even wrap my brain around that. The internet's crazy to begin with. Can't even wrap my brain around the internet. But the fastest growing industry is child pornography. And ladies, sweet ladies, your age groups fall into that. 624,000 plus child porn traders, people who are trading pornography for child porn, have been discovered online in the U.S. alone. In 2018 alone, listen to these numbers, it's insanity. More than 5 billion, 511, or I'm sorry, 517 million hours of porn were consumed on the world's largest porn site. In one year. How many days are in a year? That number breaks down to 229,875,000 days. Ladies, who oh, can I just lovingly tell you? You cannot see porn on someone that well unless you live with them, watch their behaviors, watch relationships. So if you are just outside in, looking in with a, a, a guy, and you're like, oh, he's such a good guy. Guys, ladies, he might be. Give him time and space to prove that. You don't know if he's consuming porn. You might be as well, and you bring that into the relationship. Lesbian has the most searched for porn times, porn, I'm sorry, porn term on the world's largest free porn site in 2018. Remember how I was talking about when you're seeking identity versus role confusion? When you're not finding your identity because Again, you're looking for your identity in human world, and it can only come from God. Then you're, you're failing at finding an identity, so you get more confused about your role. So then you seek other types of play, other types of sexual involvement. See that? The world's largest free porn site also received over 33,500,000,000 site visits during 2018 alone. Why is there such a presence of pornography in our society, ladies? Why do you think? Do you have any ideas? It is such a worth issue. It's an identity issue. Because we can think, we think we can find worth and identity in something so intimate, like what we see on a screen, or what a boy is going to want us to do with him. That's intimacy, so we, we connect it. Remember those connections that Satan warps? We connect that intimacy with identity. Oh, he sees me. No, he just sees your body. Right? <sighs> Sexual morality. Porneo is the word that pornea comes from. And it means to sell off or surrender sexual purity, promiscuity of any and every type. Pornography, I want you guys to really get this, write this down. Next slide, please, Gina. Pornography is the most effective way to play God and meet your own sexual desires. 
It's the most accessible form of sexual idolatry, impurity. You have full control in that setting. You get what you want, when you want, how you want, with who you want. Enter a human being. That doesn't line up. You're not doing it the way that I like it to be done, and da 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 da. So then, so many people who struggle with porn isolate relationships out, and the addiction grows. Because they get to play God and be in control and say, I don't want to wait and ask God to control and help me control my sexual impulses and desires. Pray for marriage. I'm not going to wait for God to do that. I'm just going to take it in my own hands and be my own God. Pornography, no, I'm sorry. In idolatry, back in the Bible days, there were sexual rituals that were at the core of idolatry. And so what happens is there's so much sexual ritual that happens when we have idolatry in our own life. Idolatry. And I'm going to explain it a little bit more in a minute. Um, but when we're seeking worth and, re- and identity in relationships, we worship that and then we just bow down to the demands of that person in the relationship. And oftentimes, that's in the sexual realm. So I want you guys to write down these websites. For more of the statistics and articles, um, I found a lot of those statistics from these sites. Um, They have great personal testimonies, great information, um, great statistics. I want you guys to check these sites out and really, really reach out for help if you're struggling with pornography. I'll give you guys a second. And as we wrap up some things, oh, oh, go back. My bad, my bad. Yell at me when you're ready. Oh, sorry. I'll get out of the way. And if you guys need them afterwards, just come up and I can tell you. Okay, we're going to kind of move on. All right, so remember a verse earlier, 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 through 7? The last part of it says, For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. So let's look at impurity in contrast with purity. Okay, we talked about purity earlier. We're going to look at impurity now. The Greek word is akatharsia. I'm not Greek. Uncleanness, ritual impurity of lustful, luxurious, profligate, which means recklessly extravagant or wasteful living. And when I look back at when I was really walking in rebellion to the Lord and really living a lifestyle of partying and everything that went with it, I really see how reckless I was. I was clouded. It's reckless would look like me just running down this aisle and then falling everywhere because I step on the balls and then I knock myself out and <laughs> knock somebody else out, right? That's like reckless living. And so um, ritual impurity... That's what's done in the idol worship. Um, we, when we seek in a person what only God can give, we find it's easier to act out these rituals of impurity, ladies. Can I tell you my sexual ritual when I was in my party phase? It started with making plans with my friend, my, my partner in crime friend. I would hide behind a face of makeup. I'd hide behind in modest clothing. I'd hide at the bars, behind alcohol, under the lights, dimmed down by the music. And at occasion, I'd end up hiding behind the warped sense that I was chosen because I was in a man's bed. It's a ritual, and I did it all the time. And it becomes your ritual. It becomes something you are used to. Romans 1, 24 through 25 says, Therefore God gave them up in the lust of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped the served and cre- served the creature rather than the creator. Ladies, can I give you a loving warning? When we are pushing the boundaries of rebellion and idolatry, 
there will come a point where God releases his support and gives you over to it, the full weight of it, and says, fine. I've tried endlessly to get you to turn back to my loving, protecting arms, but you keep pushing these boundaries and wanting that, so go ahead. Have fun. I will be here the whole way with you because God says I will never leave or forsake you, but you're going to feel the full weight of this. What this looks like, I need a volunteer. Sophie, you did one before. Let me get somebody else. Come, baby. Oh, right, yeah. Okay, what this looks like, I want you to hold this with me. One hand. So, we never know. See, when, what happens is when we walk in rebellion, when we walk through things in life and sin, God says, I am still here with you. You don't leave God and then come back to him. He travels with you. And he gave me a really sobering picture that said, Jenna, when you're in bed with that man, I'm also in that bed. (laughs) Gonna let that breathe a minute. (laughs) So what happens is he says, I'm walking with you. But you keep pushing your boundaries, Jenna. So at 24 years old, God let go of the support. He didn't let go of me. He let go of the support of holding that weight and said, you got that now. Go had it. She's struggling. It's a lot. Yeah, but guess what? I carried that for about seven more years. Yeah? And here's what happens. I finally said, Jesus, take it back. I'm so sorry. I'm so done. It is too heavy and it hurts. And I have flung it in an attempt to get it up. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I just hit you. Right? I lost girls that I mentored early on in my rebellion because they saw a different lifestyle that I was living that did not line up with what I was telling her. I hit her with my weight. So God will give you up to those ladies. Idolatry, and these are the last few slides we have. Idolatry is exchanging a truth for a lie and worshiping what's created. Yeah. Could you write what down? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. It'll sit for a minute. Um, So exchanging a truth for a lie. There's an exchange that happens in idolatry. So the truth is what? I am worth God's son. God said, you are worth enough to give up my son for you. And they turn to Jesus and say, what is she worth to you? Jesus says, I will give my life for her. They turn to the Holy Spirit and says, what is she worth for you? And he says, when she accepts a personal relationship with you, Jesus, I will leave home in heaven and take up residence within her soul. So her identity changes, your identity changes, and you become daughter of God, a bride of Christ, and a temple of the Holy Spirit. Who you are is not a sister, it's not a cousin, it's not a teenager, it's not a girl, it is a daughter of God, a bride of Christ, and a temple of the Holy Spirit. I want you to say those words with me on the count of three. I want you to say, I, and put your name in there, I, Jenna, am a daughter of God, a bride of Christ, and a temple of the Holy Spirit. One, two, three. I, Jenna, am a daughter of God, bride of Christ, temple of the Holy Spirit. Now tell me that like you mean it. One, two, three. I, Daughter of God, a bride of Christ, and a temple of the Holy Spirit. Ladies, that's what you get in Satan's face and tell him, "Uh uh-uh, not today, Satan. I am a daughter of God, bride of Christ, temple of the Holy Spirit. You will not come at me with these lies. In Jesus' name. 
So what happens is that truth, I, I exchange for the lie that says what? I can gain worth from and find my identity in another person. And then sexual activity is the way to do that. So I say, no, I have this amazing truth, but okay, Satan, I'm going to give that truth to you and I'm going to accept this lie. And so what happens is you have a choice. Lies from Satan or God's truth about your worth. For time, you guys come up to me afterwards and get, like, we have campfire time later, so you guys come up and get the notes. Um, will you guard your path or leave it up to chance? Ladies, can I remind you of something? Your choice button is not broken. You choose things that you don't want to do all the time. So you're able to choose, are you not? So when God says, choose my truth about your worth and identity over Satan's lies, choose to choose. Decide to choose God's truth. So this wheel of worth is what we're going to wrap things up with. So things that we gain worth in. What are some of those? Name them out. Intercourse, porn, masturbation, sexting or anything sexual other than intercourse. We talked about that stuff earlier. Areas that we feel more worthy, affirmation, status, companionship, comfort, material things. So I made this fun little wheel of worth. Status, love, affirmation, success, today is your day, comfort, relationships, companionship, approval, right? So what happens then is if you have not yet learned to put your worth and identity in Christ, it's a spin of the wheel. Whoever's next, whatever way is next, that's what you're seeking your identity and worth in. So if we roll this and land on affirmation. Who has the little hearts that say trust and control? We added, we gave, you have trust and control? <clears throat> okay, so, what's your name? Bree. Bree. So Bree, we're going to pretend that I represent a romantic interest for you. <laughs> pretend. <laughs> so if you seek affirmation from me, romantic interest person, I'm going to say, okay, you want affirmation? I need you to send me a nude picture. Woo. I need you to send me a new picture on Snapchat. That's how I'm going to affirm you. And so you might go back and forth with you in your mind, but you end up doing it. And so what happens is then you give me, it costs you, idolatry costs you something, ladies. No, hold up control first. You give me trust. She doesn't, she doesn't know this interest, romantic interest person enough to know what they're going to do with a picture. So she just costs her trust. Now, to go deeper in the relationship, because I really see that I have the power now, I'm going to ask you, it's going to cost you control. So here you go. So we can do that. So who else has hearts? Yell them out. Self-esteem. Self purity. Security. What? What? Reputation. Relationship. Money. Honesty. 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 Option. Your opinion. Your opinion. Doesn't really matter what you want. If I have the power, if the romantic interest person has the power to define your worth, they have the power, ladies. So this is just a loving reminder that says you cannot find worth in anything other than God. So you've got to understand the connection between these three things. What area you seek your worth in from a person. Like what area? This is bottom. What you'll use to gain that worth, the top, and then what it's going to cost you to do so. You can't get one of those without the others. God's perfect design for sex and sexual play and sexual anything. It's a beautiful thing that God's designed for marriage. It's an earthly picture of two people becoming one that represents how Jesus becomes one with us through salvation is saying, sex is fine, ladies. I created it, and it's pleasurable. But you don't get the full pleasure without the consequences unless it's in my designed place of marriage. Ladies, if you only seek to keep your virginity, you will miss the mark on purity. 
And if you have already lost your virginity, you can still be pure. We can still be soul virgin, virgins where we commit to walk a path of purity from this point forward and commit that to God. Not even to a husband, but I'm God, I'm going to commit this to you. And if you bring me a husband and he gets to reap the benefits of that, great, icing on the cake. But I'm walking this path of purity to commit to you, God, because I want to be clean I want to be clear-minded, and I want to have a clean path of purity to run down and accept every new blessing you have along it. Ladies, purity is so much more than virginity. I'm so glad you guys let me talk. Probably went longer. I'm so sorry. But I'm so glad you trusted me to go into this message with you and into this depth. Please reach out if you are struggling with this, there's no shame or condemnation here, but there is help and love and support, okay? All right, I am done.